Hey guys, in this video, I am going over long bone immobilization. It's going to be of the forearm, and I'm going through the entire NREMT skill, and I'm also going to explain step by step as I'm performing the skill. In the next video, it'll be me just performing the skill without any explanation. So the first thing you want to do is you want to say BSI. By you saying BSI, you're letting the proctor know that you have everything you need to protect yourself against contamination from your patient. Next thing you want to do is you want to identify where the long bone fracture is. For this scenario, the long bone fracture is going to be on the forearm on, of the right arm. So we have a radial ulna fracture. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the right arm and I'm going to stabilize it like this. I would have my imaginary partner maintain and stabilize this or I would have my patient stabilize it. So sir, can you please stabilize your arm in that place? So go ahead and get that arm. I'll cut it right here, kind of rest it up. Next, I'm going to check for CMS, so circulation, motor, and sensory. So I'm going to check for a pulse. I would ask the, the proctor, is my pulse present? Is it's, it present? My CMS is present. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and just go ahead and go through it. So go ahead and squeeze my finger for M, motor. Go ahead and let go, sir. And which finger am I touching? Pinky. Pinky. So my CMS is present and my proctor did say that already. The reason you're doing this, you're checking for CMS because it, you might have to realign it or adjust it in some other form if there is no circulation going to that, to that hand. That's what it's for. You're checking for circulation to make sure that everything's good to go. You might have to readjust it or something. Next, you want to get your appropriate splinting material. For this patient, a regular SAM splint is going to do just fine. And I'm going to measure it up against the affected arm to make sure that it's going to, it's going to hold in place and be good. So let's go ahead and put your arm right there. And then that looks pretty good. Go ahead and get your arm back in place, please. And I'm going to mold it to make sure that it's stabilized by folding it like this in a U shape. You make it a little more rigid and stable for your patient's arm. So now that it's in place and it's molded, go ahead and put it back on the arm and ensure that it's actually good. You want to immobilize the joints above and below the fracture because the fracture is, we'll say it's mid, it's mid shaft right here. You want to immobilize this joint as much as possible, so this is good enough right there. And you also want to immobilize the elbow. So you want to leave a little flap up here so you can immobilize it and put it in place. So can you hold this in place for me, please? Now we're gonna go ahead and get a bandage to wrap it around the stamp spin and the arm. This way, it doesn't go anywhere. So there is no right way of starting it off. You can start it from anywhere you want. Make sure it's nice and tight on the patient, not too tight to where you're constricting blood flow, but just enough to where it's going to maintain the sound split on your patient's arm. So you go ahead and let go like that. Okay. So let's go ahead and hold like that. There you go. Just like that. This should be good enough for now. If you feel like you have to, I would personally put one more bandage over this just to kind of make sure I go past the past this joint right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and just do that just to be safe. There is no such thing as overdoing it when it comes to this skill. Just don't. So go ahead and squeeze on this right here. You want to make sure you leave enough space to get a radial pulse again. And that should be good enough right there. Like I said, there's preference and there's principle. I've said that before in other videos. Principle is what needs to be done. Preference is how you do it. This is stabilizing the arm. It may not be as pretty as other people do it for this scenario, but it's getting the job done. 
So after that, you still want to hold that in place and have somebody maintain that for you. And then you want to completely secure that extremity. So for this injury, I would tie a knot on the short end of a triangular bandage. The knotted end goes on the elbow. You bring the part that's against the patient's body and the affected arm through the affected area site. And then the other flap goes on the opposite side. You want to go ahead and pull up and tie your patient. Go ahead and let all that weight go from your arm and make sure it's going to stay in place and it's not going to sag after you're done. Not at all. Now, in some, some training facilities, they may want you to also put a swath on the patient. Some may not require you to do, but go ahead and default to what your training facility tells you to do for this scenario, okay? I'm not going to do that, but I'm letting you know that some may ask you to or require you to put a swath on your patient. And the very last thing we do is go ahead and check for CMS again. So I'm taking for a pulse. So go ahead and squeeze my finger. Go ahead and let go. And which finger am I touching? The index. The index finger. And the reason you do that is that you want to make sure that you did not compromise any circulation by putting on this splint and the, and the sling on your patient and or the swat as well. I hope you guys got some value from this. And in the next video, I'm going over the long bone immobilization without explaining, just doing it as if I was an EMT. See you guys later.